Goalkeeper showed all his class there, though. Blocked by Rob Green. Oh, what a crucial one. Free and a save by Rob Green. What a save. What a save. What a chance. What a save. Oh, what a save. Welcome to the Leeds United show. We're going to be reviewing the weekend's defeat at Chelsea and previewing the Friday night fixture here at Ellen Road against West Ham. We're also going to be hearing from a Leeds fan chatting all about the Rainbow Laces campaign. Let's kickstart the show then by introducing our guest, a former Leeds United keeper who's also played for Chelsea and our next opponent's West Ham. Hello, Rob Green. How are you? Morning, guys. Yeah, good. Thanks. Yourself? Very well, thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's get stuck straight into the impact that Marcelo Bielsa has had. Obviously, uh, the change that you've, see you've seen in this Leeds United team. What do you make of it? It's incredible, isn't it? It's, uh, it's wonderful to watch. It's, it's been so impressive and I still speak to the players there now and and, and I'm sure they admit and, and there's a really uh, interesting piece that I've, I've referred back to before that uh, looking at be able to do a presentation I think it was in in Holland uh, and speaking about about not just the physical aspects but the the mental approach to playing and coming up with answers for players of maybe not your world-class players but players who are currently playing for Leeds and, and coming up with answers for those guys and getting them to be playing at the best of their abilities. And he's done that, hasn't he? It's been, it's been, it's been incredible to watch the improvement from the guys that, that I've played with and, and who were competitive in the championship and to see them blitz it for a season and then come into the Premier League and, and playing such a, a fearless manner has been something that's been a really, a real joy to watch. Um, Rob, can I just ask you, because obviously, as you say, you know, you still keep in contact with the ones that you know. Do they speak highly as well of Marcelo? They, they love him. Uh, they, they think he's everything that you could, uh, you could imagine to be. Um, and, you know, I, I think that they just, they trust him implicitly because they get what he's doing. They don't, I don't think they understand it every time, but I think they just trust the fact that, that they're learning from him all the time. And, the reasons he comes up with sometimes is is sort of mind blowing for them, but makes perfect sense. So it's a really it's a it's an interesting dynamic and one that they're looking at it. The lads who who are still there and, and looking at it, saying, "Look, he's he's taking us to places where we can't we can imagine of going really under uh, previous uh, previous management managers or maybe previous clubs." And and so let's let's just stick with it and do everything we can. And I think they're reaping the rewards from that now. Well, Rob, you still live in the area, so you know the expectations of the fans. You know how demanding they, they can be. But be honest, when we got promotion, did you raise a cheeky little glass for, for the celebration? Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe I went out with the lads who I did know <laughs> he was for an evening. But uh, no, they, they certainly enjoyed themselves here and uh, down the road from Leeds. And, uh, and, and no, it was, it was great. It's brilliant for the area. It's brilliant for the club it's been such a long time coming and the one that you, you know it, it's it's been debated whether you know clubs are good for the premier league or bad for the premier league and there's an arrogance towards it and that sort of stuff but you know the return of leeds back into the premier league certainly makes for stories even the game on saturday and the games coming up against manchester united you, you, I, I listened to a podcast covering a manchester united game and the man united fans were talking about the leeds game already so, you know, that, that it, it means something to them as well. So it, it certainly brings extra character to, to, to the Premier League and, it, and it's brilliant. Yeah, it's a certainly welcome, welcome return, isn't it? And you mentioned, Rob, as well, the game on Saturday and you were covering it, um, that defeat, obviously, to Chelsea uh, for Sky Sports. There's no, there's no shame, really, is there, in that loss to Chelsea, given their investment? No, and I think for that first half, um, you just when Chelsea sort of got to grips with it i think you then saw the, the the sheer class of the players coming through and having worked with those guys the, the, the way that they function and the way they operate and the talents that they have that was no great surprise but that opening half hour you could see the chelsea players and, and the way and they knew what was coming i mean you know frank has a history with marco bielsa and, and, and uh, bielsa the manager and he, he's one that's uh one that is there that everyone knows about, but also he's, he knows how they play. He knows how Leeds play and, and he knew what was coming. The players, maybe not so much. You know, we saw at the, the game against Liverpool on the opening day, it, it, it took everybody who hadn't watched Leeds by surprise. 
and knew they're going, well, this is what they do. This is how they do it. And and I think for an hour, it, it was great. I think the, the lads got uh, tired. I think it's it's difficult to keep that up against a team that just keep the ball so well. And you've got just good, such good operators on the ball. And and their extra quality shone through in the end. But it was a wonderful start. That goal gave them a real, the, 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 the lead team a real boost. And one that, uh, you know, I, I think... Had they held on for a bit longer until half time, maybe then 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 they, you're looking at it going right. right we, we're giving ourselves a chance here, but it, it it wasn't to be. But it was a good showing. It wouldn't be a Monday morning, would it, without talking about VAR? Still up for debate as usual. And the incident from that game was the Pervader penalty, non-penalty. How did you feel about it, Rob? That now looking back on it, the players get punished for being too honest. In a sense, uh, you look at uh, you look at the. The way that um, Danny Welbeck won a penalty, I think that was the obvious uh, comparison from previous games. And you look at that and you look at uh, the one from the weekend. Yes, it's there. Are either a penalty? It's it's debatable. That's not VAR. VAR is is the, the process behind it. It's not the debate of whether it's a penalty or not. The referee made that decision. He didn't think, deem it to be enough contact. If he'd have fallen over, we've seen, we've seen, and it needs, it's kind of the penalties given where a hand goes on the shoulder and the player goes down. Now, you don't know how hard, how much pressure is being put on the player. It could just be the lightest of touches, the merest of touches, but they go down and win a penalty. I think you're giving yourself more chance if you go down. That's, that's the way the world is with, with VAR. It's not, it's not, that wasn't, I don't believe that to be VAR. I just believe that to be a refereeing decision, you know, off the back of it and, and, sort of because of VAR, we all get to look at it again and again and again, and it's an opportunity to give it. He didn't give it. And, and, and you know, that's possibly a flaw in, in, in the uh, characteristics of Perveda that he's too honest. Uh, we heard Giroud say as well, Rob, that Leeds are one of the toughest teams that he's faced. What is it, do you think, that makes this Leeds team so difficult? Movement, the, the, the amount of movement the players create, the, the the running off the ball that they have you watch them from the uh, tactical cameras that they provide in, in in games and it's and it's fascinating to watch it's it's one that you see the other team what they need is is basically you, you're driving it into a man-to-man game and you've got to go man-to-man and that's what makes it so tough you can't just sit in your you can just sit in your shape and give up space but if you want to be aggressive and you want to be Chelsea at home being a dominant dominant force you have to go and take the game to Leeds which is and go toe to toe with them and that's what makes it hard so i think obviously the movement but the the, the fitness of the players is is incredible and uh, and one that you see that they they thrive knowing they're as fit as they can be and and um, motoring around that pitch so I think yeah, Ollie was Ollie's right. It's a it's a tough one to come up against because you, you just know you've got to do it. I just want to go back on the point with Bielsa and some of the boys you said you've played with here at Leeds, Rob, and you've seen them, them develop. You've seen them play in the Championship, and now they're doing it on the Premier League stage. How hard work does Bielsa put into that? And is that his biggest strength turning players who were playing in the Championship and now they're excelling in the Premier League? Does that make him even more special? I think so, and, and you know, for a club that have done that and you're looking at the valuation of players he's 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 sort of making players that are worth x amount five times that and so that for a club is 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 wonderful and uh it's it's something that you know is is a, is a bonus on top of that i think uh i think the 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 difficulty is recreating that if and when you know the dreaded time comes but uh it, it, it's something that you've uh, each manager has their own way and has their own identity and, and he has that at the moment I think for him tactically he you see how the likes of Guardiola and, and, and others at the top of the game talk about it as being some sort of godfather of this tactical new footballing world and, and and it's something that you know you're looking at it and the way that he studies the game and the way that he looks at football is is just different from from a lot of people and and that includes the lads at Leeds that includes the likes of myself he just can see things on a different level and and that's something to to to, to enjoy as much as anything that you you realize you're in the midst of someone who can do something so, so differently yeah and i think even the neutrals have appreciated having bielsa sort of in the premier league as well and watching his style of play let's talk about melier for a minute rob because obviously um most people might not have actually heard of him or been that aware of him outside of the club but he's so young really in goalkeeping terms what have you made of him 
so far? It's been an incredible start. And um, speaking again, one of the lads turned around and said, if he was English, everyone would be screaming from the rooftops about him. He's not. <laughs> so that's unfortunate for our, our national team. But it's to say he's, he's, he's only 20 years old and putting in the performances like he is, is, is fantastic. And it, 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 and it's not an insult in any way, shape, or form, but he, he looks so much younger as well that it's, it's incredible to see. And uh, you know, you, you're looking at him; he's he's technically very, very gifted. I think playing out from the back there's a couple of times at the weekend, but on the whole, it's just brilliant to watch. You just put make it so simple. He managed to get a, such a good first touch every time, and just to play in the right manner. He knows where the passes are. He plays like a centre midfielder. It's it's like. We, we, he could do it blindfolded. He's been brought up uh, in, in in France, in Lorient, to, to do this since such a young age. And he understands it. And it's a wonderful gift. That's, speaking to Jorginho at, at Chelsea and, and the way that he talks about football and the way that the, where he sees the players to be on the pitch without even looking and knowing what people are doing is is, is fascinating. And, and, I, and I, it's not as complex. But as a goalkeeper, if you know what pass is on when you're receiving the ball and where it's coming from and who's going to be where, it's such an advantage. It'll be interesting to see for him when the crowds come back. He's played very few games with without with uh, with fans. Um, that's that's going to be something. That's playing at a full house. Uh, Stamford Bridge is very different to two thousand people or Anfield with with no ground. Not this is taking nothing away from the, from the performance, but it is different. Um, but it's been a bit like a bit. It's a bit. It's a bit like watching Leeds last season and watching him play. Everyone's saying, "Oh, what a surprise this youngster is!" And you're saying, "Well, if you'd have watched him last season, if you'd have watched Leeds last season, if you didn't just watch the Premier League, you'd, you'd know these things. You'd see it, and uh, and it's and it's coming through, and and it's been fantastic." How difficult is it for though, a young keeper, Rob? Because you say they're 20 years of age and. Historically, the old kind of cliche for goalkeepers, you don't develop until you kind of get into your mid-20s. So for him to do it at such a young age, is that even more impressive? It's been brilliant to watch. It's been fascinating to watch. It's been something that, you know, it, it looks like nerves and being youngster. And I made my debut 18 and, and, you know, I remember the nerves from that game. I'm sure he is nervous, but it doesn't portray it on the pitch. And the way that he can come into the game and understand the game is is wonderful and at such a young age i think this is this is sort of a new era of having academy and youth development or however you want to call it wherever they might grow up at starting at such a young age that i, I, I think i read that he was in professional a professional club from the age of eight now that's 12 years of development before you've even kicked a ball or or you know he's got to 20 years old so He'll understand everything. He'll know everything. He's been brought brought up in such a way that you understand it. Whereas, you know, I'm, I've signed five, six years later for a professional club and got into full-time football at 16. Then I was saying I was 28 then, sort of 12 years later. So I think there's the comparison that you've, you've got that guys are being trained younger and earlier. And also their understanding of the game is, is quicker and earlier. And then that fear factor isn't there in this generation. They don't have that fear factor. You know, you speak to the young players, they they don't care about walking in front of big crowds. They don't care about audiences. They don't care about crowds off the pitch, away from the state, millions of people watching. It doesn't even, and they don't even entertain. They just do their thing. And I, and it, not ha- I haven't met him, but you get the feeling that he's just doing his thing and he just happens to be really, really good at it. He certainly is doing it very well. And who else in the squad has impressed you so far this season, Rob? No, I, I think uh, looking at it, I think uh, you obviously talk about Patrick Bamford and his goals. I think that was always a question mark about him. I think he's uh, got bored of it uh, and he's uh, kind of enjoyed more so than anything. And, and but and, and, but you know he's, he's 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 intelligent enough to know so that that can change and he can and he could go on a barren run tomorrow and for no reason but he scored the goals and enjoyed them but not sort of giving it too much back and because it's just the start so there's one on a personal level it must be really pleasing for him but and also Luke Haley and someone who's had you know we talk about players and their paths and their journeys and and one that sort of to go from Arsenal to, to different clubs to, to Yeovil to, to to take that step down and to work hard and to keep going and to keep that confidence and, and someone who's who's 
you know, really benefited from playing under Bielsa because, and also the, the, he, he can, he, he's come in at centre half and done brilliantly as well. So there, there's, there's a few, and and you know, I think you could go on and on, couldn't you? That, that there's there's so many players who've who've so far this season had a real had a real impact and uh, really enjoyed being in the Premier League. A few games into the season now, Rob, what do you make as a realistic aim for Leeds for the rest of the season? Speaking to my Mates or Leeds fans, they some of them say they reckon they've got enough points to stay up already, which is a bit harsh on some clubs. Uh, but uh, I think uh, I think survival. Look, until you get five six years into your Premier League stay, um, you're always looking. You're always looking to survive. You look at Bournemouth. You look at the heights they were hitting. Sheffield United, the heights they were hitting last season, then the struggles they're having this season. You know, this is this is why Burnley are, are such a, a wonderful uh, example, and, and it's very different in the style of play. We we know that, but to find a way to compete at this level, when essentially budget-wise you shouldn't compete at this level, is something that is 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 a minor miracle in itself. So, I think for 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 Leeds to to continue how they're playing, to keep on finding ways to come up against opposition and, and, and you know, you, you look at the, the, the games, that, uh, the defeats in there, the Wolves defeat, the, the um, Palace and um, Leicester defeats, that you look at those and the lessons learned are so, so big and so fast at times that it's very difficult to take them all on ball in the Premier League because, you know, people don't play, have to play well in the Premier League. You just need your top players to perform at a at a certain time, at a key moment, and you can nick a goal and be organised, and and you know really nullify the opponents. It's a very different game in the Premier League. I think learning that continually throughout this season, whilst picking up the points, will be brilliant. If to to, to anywhere above the relegation, then it will be a massive, massive learning step and a massive achievement. I mean, the Premier League as a whole has proved pretty unpredictable uh, so far this season, Rob. What have you made to what we've seen so far? It's, yeah, it's been there's been some crazy games in there. I think everything thrown into it, the moments with without uh, a pre-season, the teams coming for the end of last season, straight into this season, the mini Champions League, the real concertinaed way the season's been put together the, and, and the difficulties that teams are having just having to just play games you can't train just go out there and play i think the guys that are um that aren't involved in european football have got a real bonus and you say that we, we say it's been unpredictable you look at it you look at the premier league tottenham are top chelsea are second liverpool are third whichever order it is i can't remember there, there's 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 manchester united are up there manchester city are up there you you're looking at it the big boys are up there it's only arsenal who are, who are, who are suffering right now so you say it is unpredictable. I think it's finding its way. I think also um, sort of just chronologically in terms of a calendar, you're used to approaching Christmas going, right, it's a halfway mark. And we're not. We're not even close. So it, it's a real it's a real sort of, it goes against everything that you're used to sort of in, in terms of a football season. So it, it, it's one that is for, for everybody we've all got to get used to. And I think it adds to the intrigue when you're not inside it. I don't think it helps when you're inside it. Obviously, being at Chelsea when we were in Europe and got all the way to the final and thankfully won, and being in the uh, the League Cup, getting to the League Cup final as well, the amount of games, the amount of travelling, the amount of concentration the players need, that really takes its toll later on in the season. I'm interested to see what happens come February and March and April when we've had a long, hard winter. What happens then? Yeah, that could be a good point, that, Rob. Really interesting when we get through to that kind of stage. But the immediate future is West Ham next up for Leeds. Another one of your old clubs, obviously. So what do you make to their kind of start? Obviously, it's been quite strong from their point of view. But what kind of game are you expecting as well? Yeah, they've, they've found their own identity. They've found a way of playing. Uh, it's, it's David Moyes has gone in for a second time, I think. At the end of last season, you're looking at him and he was just hoping to grasp onto a performance and some sort of consistency that gave him gave him something to work on for the week to work to work towards right I've got a team I can work with this I can I can move towards the to the next game he's found that now and he's got that consistency I think you know they, they obviously played Manchester United at the weekend and uh, were the better team for such a long period of time and you would say the criticism being they didn't score enough goals they, they weren't clinical enough they could have been out of sight by the end, Alaire had a big chance. Jared Bowen had chances. You, 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 uh, 
uh, four nails hit the post. There was, you know, it was all in the space of the first half. You see, it would have been three, four nil up by then. And you didn't bring on Rashford's and um, Fernandez because it, 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 it didn't matter. But it was, uh, it was unfortunate for them um, in, in, in that respect. I think that you're looking at, a, 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 they've got a very, very steady um, back five now. Well, you call it back three, but the, those three are, are pretty, pretty near consistent. Um, you know, they've, they've got uh, Aaron Questwell coming in, who steps into midfield to play and provides real threat with his left foot from crosses, from balls in, from picking through passes when he comes into the midfield. So they've got that. I think Mikel Antonio's still currently with his um, just his drive, determination, energy, and just his sheer, sheer willingness to work and to cause such as problems. That, that's a miss at the moment because... Alair is, is is not that guy. He's he's a he's a he's more of a target man and uh, one that wants to play with people alongside him. Antonio will go up there on his own and just batter away and, and keep on fighting. So that'll be interesting to see whether he's fit enough to play. Um, but it's it's a different challenge for Leeds. It's one that you're going to come up and uh, they're a threat from every set piece. We saw that at the weekend. They're, they've got such good quality on the ball with individuals and. Uh, and David Moyes is, is, is putting together a, a, a very David Moyes-like team, a, a, a team that's organised, well-structured, combative and uh, causes people problems. Do you think Leeds can get the three points? No reason why not. No reason why not. It's, it's one of those games you go into and say, look, if we play at the utmost, do the right things at the right times. And this, the, the cricket's a critical one with the, with the Premier League, clinical at both ends. If you're clinical at both ends, you give yourself every chance. And... Uh, I played under Sam Allardyce and, you know, wasn't bothered about what went on in the middle of the pitch. You just looked at both ends, you know, get me players who can do the right things there and you'll be successful. And uh, that's that's what he built his whole career around. And it's one that, uh, you know, for all the wonderful football, you look at it and you look at you look at Saturday, there was a set piece in there that cost leads. That's 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 another big thing is, is, is getting them right. I think that's that's going to be key for the weekend. Rob Green, it's been a pleasure having you on the Leeds United show. Thank you so much for giving us your insight. Thank you. Pleasure, guys. Over the last few months, the Leeds United Foundation have been working with pupils at Kirkstall Valley Primary School to celebrate inclusion and diversity with a pretty special arts project. We went along to find out more. Today the BBC have been here filming for a Match of the Day feature and it's kind of essentially a celebration event, a particular project we've been doing here at Kirkstall Valley Primary School. It came together in the initial stages through conversations with the school, Burley Banks here, Tom Pam of the author, and we thought it'd be really nice to sort of combine arts and literacy to deliver a, a project uh, where children could celebrate the diversity through looking at their own journeys, the family history, and then aligning that to the school the, the, and the wider community and the city of Leeds. They've all got different backgrounds, their families have all got different backgrounds, and I think the main thing for them to learn is that we're all different and we all come from different places, but we're all human beings all the same. Look, so who's he playing for? Me! That is amazing that you can, your, your English is so good now. So well done for learning and settling in, that's, that's amazing. We have a, a new player that's just come in and he's, he's, he's Brazilian and he doesn't speak much English but every day he's learning and it's obviously important for us to just obviously still make him feel a part of conversations and he is part of the teams. <laughs> it's, it's great, we have so many different languages here and we're all together though. Well, the kids all wrote a story about their heritage and their background, and then I got involved and um, they all designed a front cover for their story, if you like. 30 of them all the way down the wall and I helped them paint it. These are amazing, aren't they? So you hope that um, this will inspire them to, you know, do more out and pick up a paintbrush more often, hopefully. I was actually really impressed. I didn't, it even exceeded my expectations. Literally, you've got a blank canvas and you can just go and express yourself as a young kid. You've got a creative mind, so it's great to just have that blank canvas and be able to do with it as you please. Obviously, pre-lockdown and stuff like that, you could feel the, the vibe in the city was changing and it's a great thing to be able to 
be a part of change or something like that. It's been fantastic. I think the fact that he's made two Zoom appearances uh, by virtual means, connecting with the children at different stages of the project. I think initially it acted as a real source of inspiration and it showed a genuine interest in the project and, and, and obviously what we have planned today is kind of summarise the project by a series of Q&As with the children uh, and I suppose acknowledging their efforts and the great work that they've put into it. I think it's been humbling and a real great experience for every one of us. We've all learned something from it. That's uh, adults, teaching staff, anybody being attached to the programme, but most importantly, the children. I think just each week looking at the surprises on the faces and little comments and statements such as, I'm really proud. So it's almost been a bit of a surprise conducting this and taking part in this process as well for them. It's amazing. The initial reaction has been fantastic. Not only is it a visual extravaganza and a real celebration of the work, but actually the QR code as well then aligns and takes people on a journey to sort of really understand what their illustrations are about. Oh, the reaction has been amazing. People beeping their horns, waving, people stopping as they walk past to say how much it's cheered them up, brightened up their day kind of thing. People asking what it's all about um, and hopefully people will be able to use this QR code to get more details on it on their phone. As a Premier League club, we have a duty to engage and demonstrate the sort of good work that we're doing in the community so it's been fantastic being given this platform it's absolutely massive and uh, you know we really sort of thank the Premier League for branding us with this opportunity uh, and the BBC they obviously idolize some of the boys so if they're able to speak to them and hear their side of the story then it, it, they're obviously gonna listen to it and learn from it and hopefully input it into their own their own lives and future I mean, Ben, this has had such great exposure, hasn't it? And it, it is a really great thing, isn't it? It's powerful, great exposure. You've seen it on Match of the Day as well. Yeah. Just so people around the, can, the country can see what powerful messages are going on just in the community in and around Leeds. And I was lucky enough to be part of the LUTV to go film one of the days and see how engaging the pupils are, to see all the work being on Sidle Road and Kirkstall Road, which is one of the busiest in the country. So the exposure it gets on, on, on back of that, it's just a fantastic initiative that everyone's bought into you uh, Tyler Roberts as well one of one of our players wants to get involved it just shows everyone's pulling in the same direction and it's been fantastic to see and what was the feeling like when you were actually down there with LUTV special really is special engagement with 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 the pupils because people just see a football club being automatically think oh they're here to put a football session yeah. on a training session there's so much more goes into the foundation work in and around the club and that's from from right at the top from the owner down to Angus they're really Really pushing these initiatives and the benefits the benefits get from from the city and the people who live in here as well. Friday's game against West Ham is our match in support of the Rainbow Laces campaign and Stonewall to show support for all LGBT plus people in football and beyond to make anyone feel safe and welcome irrespective of sexual orientation or gender identity. There's going to be Rainbow Laces ball plinths, handshake boards and substitutes boards as well as the LED perimeter boards at the stadiums highlighting the campaign while the captains will wear a rainbow armband. We are delighted now to be joined by Stephen Wignall from Marching Out Together. Stephen, thank you so much for joining us on the Leeds United Show. You're welcome. It's great to be here. Let's start off then with Marching Out Together. For anyone who doesn't fully know what it's about, can you just offer some clarification on that, Stephen? Yeah, of course I can. So uh, Marching Out Together is Leeds United's LGBT plus supporters group. Uh, we were formed in um, 2017, just before the season kicked off. Uh, and we're there to, to really support um, the, the gay community and our allies in making sure that Ellen Road is uh, inclusive and supportive for everyone. Um, you know, never, never more apparent, all leads out, we is the tagline we use and, and we want to make it that for everyone. The Rainbow Laces campaign now has been around for, for a few years. How much of a difference has that as it as, as it made be just being out there it's a fantastic and it, and it makes a massive difference um as you say it's been around a few years uh, and each year we tend to build on it and, and get bigger uh it's all about visibility is the campaign about showing that uh football is is for everyone um and it's obviously backed by stonewall and uh backed by the premier league and the efl to make sure that we really um 
open the door to everyone who maybe is nervous about uh, going to a football match because obviously football is still quite masculine. It's still um, quite boisterous. Um, so I think it's just about making sure that there's people are aware that, you know, football is for everyone. And I mean, Stephen, the players supporting it is powerful in itself, isn't it? Yeah, it's really powerful. I think um, we... We see the visibility with the laces, with the campaign that goes around. If you look on um, on the socials, football players supporting uh, the campaign, the captain's armband, all the thing, all the activities that happen around the weekend. Uh, so this weekend for us, last weekend at the Chelsea match, um, just shows that the players are fully behind this campaign uh, and want to make sure that all fans feel, uh, as I say, welcome and included. You briefly mentioned about Stonewall being the charity behind the, the campaign. How important have they been helping support you? Really important. I think they, they pull it together. They orchestrate everything. They kind of lead from the front. And Stonewall's a charity that's been going for a number of years with a number of different activities under their belt. I think the Rainbow Lace is one for football and sport. Um, for me personally is, is the one that really resonates with me because I think um, you know I'm a passionate Leeds United fan I'm a passionate football fan um, and you know I, I love nothing more than, than going to the football and I think having a group like uh, marching out together or, a, or groups across the football leagues um, backed by Stonewall and backed by the campaign is only a good thing. Um, you know, we're in 2020 now, so we really, really want to see that inclusion um, continue. Uh, and the Rainbow Laces campaign is a really good uh, good way to show that. And Stephen, as a huge Leeds United fan, how has the club helped you? The club has been brilliant. So we've been working with the club now for, um, yeah, for the three years that we've been, crea we've been created. Um, we've done loads with the club. They were the first um, in 2018 to sign a charter, which was around specific actions that we would like them to um, to take and work with us. A lot around education um, for our youth players um, and for the fan base in terms of you know some of the language that's used. So some people may use language that they may feel isn't homophobic, but actually the connotations of them words that they're using could have a massive impact on someone around the around the uh, around the ground for example or around the training ground um, so the club have been great we've done loads of stuff with them they're really supportive of us um, we regularly meet with uh, Angus which is great and he, he has a really open door policy uh, now we're in the Premier League the club has appointed um, an inclusion and diversity um, manager which is fantastic um, and we've started having conversations with them around what we can do um, around Rainbow Laces, around LGBT plus History Month, around Leeds Pride next year. So there's some really great conversations going on and the club is really supportive in trying to support us uh, to make um, Ellen Road inclusive. Stephen, in your opinion, what kind of problems are we still facing in terms of equality and acceptance? Because even when we sit here today, there's still not an openly gay player in the Premier League. And due to that fact, is that still a big issue in your opinion? Absolutely, it's been. I think if you think about it, not only in the Premier League, there's no out player in any of the professional leagues in, in the UK. Uh, and that's really sad. And, and uh, I think it's... You know, we've got to come at this from from different angles. It's not just from um, from the fans' angle. I think the club has, and the FA and the Premier League have all got to work together to make an environment where someone one day will feel um, that they they can come out. Um, you know, as as we say, it's 2020. You're not telling me in 2020 there isn't a professional footballer out there that is not that's gay because. I just don't believe it. You know, the, the statistics say that there is gay players out there. And, you know, the the things we run and the campaigns we run are not about um, outing a player or wanting a player to, to come out. They, you know, a player needs to do that when they feel comfortable and ready. The message and what we do is about creating an environment both within the football club or football clubs and within the terraces that make it as safe as possible for them to feel like they come out that can come out because i think if you think about it you know it's going to be a brave step that's that one player will take one day um 
And I am sure that whoever that is, is incredibly nervous about the reaction they will get in terms of the home fans and the away fans. But I see it really clearly is that if you can play football, it doesn't matter to me or to hopefully the fans that whether you're gay, straight, bi, if you can play football for Leeds United and you're good enough, we will get behind you. And I'm sure of that. And I'm, But I'm sure there's some nervousness in terms of opposition fans and maybe the stick they might get off the off the back of that. But again, that's about us being working together to tackle any homophobic abuse that is that goes that way. And much of it, Stephen, is about educating future generations, isn't it? So that no one has to suffer discrimination. Yeah, um, we, one of the things we are really working with the club is that it is the stuff around the academy and around the future generations about making uh, Thorpe Arch uh, a really inclusive place for everyone. And the academy manager down there is absolutely brilliant and such a great ally of ours. There's dressing room banter and, you know, no one wants to take away the dressing room banter, but there's some words that maybe have, as I say, a connotation behind it that you might have a younger player, you know, in the under 23s, in the under 18s, who's maybe a little bit confused about their sexuality and someone may say something that they perceive as banter, as an example, oh, that's so gay. And that could set them back years and think, oh, I don't feel comfortable or safe to come out here. Um, so the academy is, is key. And I think um, the support we get from the academy and from the academy manager um, to really tackle this issue uh, is fantastic. Well, the game, Stephen, on, on Friday against West Ham, marching out together, going to have going to have a flag inside the ground. How powerful is that for you? Our flag has been so powerful for the years that we've uh, that we've been going. Um, we have been. Um, our flag used to be under the scoreboard when we were allowed in the ground, um, and obviously. It was the most prominent position. And I think that, again, shows the support of the club. That wasn't us saying we want that in that location. The club was, that's where it's going because that's where it's going to get the most exposure, um, which it does under the scoreboard. You know, the players celebrate there. It's fantastic. And we've had stories of, of members who, um, who have said, I feel comfortable and safe now coming back to Ellen Road just because that flag's there showing that there's people like me around the ground and around the stadium that are just like me and that flag has prompted people to maybe come out to their family and when we hear stories like that you know it, it all the work we do um it just it makes it worthwhile um so yeah this weekend Friday night, as you say, against West Ham. Our flag is on show. It's in the cop at the minute, um, which um, it had to be moved for the for the Premier League branding, which is absolutely fine. Uh, so it's in the cop. It's there for everyone to see. Um, and the coverage this weekend will be fantastic, I'm sure. Oh, do you know what? That's amazing just to hear, you know, that that one thing is symbolic of so many great things happening, uh, Stephen. Thank you so much for coming on to the Leeds United show and chatting to us about that and what it means to you. We can't let you go, though, without getting your thoughts on what you've made to the season so far. It's just been brilliant, hasn't it? I think um, I'm really, really uh, relaxed about this season. Um, I really want to enjoy it. We've had two seasons, haven't we, where every game has been, we've got to win this game, we've got to win this game, and we've expected to win so I think I kind of take that this season so far as these the games I don't expect us to win your Man City's your Liverpool and they're the games I can just enjoy and not worry about the result because if we win or we get a point that's fantastic if we lose well we were, we were probably expected to lose it's your games against your, uh, your your clubs lower down the Premier League where that's where I'm nervous and I, I, we've got to win this one because they're a rival um, so I think I really enjoyed it. It's great to be back in the Premier League. I, I, I think we'll, we'll be comfortably safe this year. I think we'll end up around mid-table, which is a great result. Uh, and then in the off-season, we hopefully kick on uh, and we, get, we, uh, we, we build and we, we go for a push next season further up the league. Thank you. Stephen Wignall from March Night Together, thank you so much for joining us on the Leeds United Show. Thank you. Thank you.